Hey guys, Scott here, Cyber Aquarius, bringing you all an update on my reef tank. Today is day 47. I haven't uh, made a video since I believe day 34. I've been extremely busy with work. We had a snowstorm, what we call a snowstorm here in Georgia. We had two inches of snow and uh, I've been really, really busy at work and with the family for the past couple weeks. But um, yeah, today's day 47 and I've added some corals. There are 13 new additions in here since the last video. And I'm gonna go over everything with you, show you what I've added, and I'm gonna talk about your water parameters that you're gonna need, need to be concerned with when you add certain types of corals, uh, specifically the Scleractinians, which are SPS and LPS corals. And as the name Scleractinian implies, they're, uh, they're built on a skeleton structure which is composed of calcium carbonate and the water parameters that you're going to need, need to be concerned with will be calcium uh, carbonates and bicarbonate salts and magnesium because they're all the primary building blocks of calcium carbonate which is what these uh, scleractinians build their skeletal structures from and we'll talk about the water parameters here in a minute but um on Wednesday, today is Monday, but this past Wednesday I had a diatom bloom, the first signs of any diatoms, uh, and it actually started receding uh, on Saturday. You can still see down here on the substrate, see back in there, and right there on the rock, there's a little bit of diatoms left, and a little bit, a little bit on the lower regions of the rock. And I'm actually starting to get some green algae now. Let me see if I can zoom in right here. Starting to get some green algae, which is a great sign right there. Right in the center of the screen. See that little speck of green? That's a great sign to know that things are starting to balance out. Now my nitrates and phosphates remain at zero parts per million. They're undetectable. But even then, guys, we're still going to experience somewhat of a diatom bloom uh, you know, after the cycle. It's just natural, it'll go away just as quickly as it appeared if you're maintaining you know, adequate uh, low nutrient levels, specifically nitrates, phosphates, and silicates, which all my levels are at zero. Okay, let me uh, show you guys what I've added. A week ago, I picked up, I believe uh, like seven, and then this past Saturday, I picked up six more. Um, so let me go ahead and go over them. The first up here, this is an Acropora, which is known as a Bali Slimer. And the reason they call it a Slimer is because when you handle it, it secretes a uh, very thick mucus. And my lights just came on a while ago, but you can see he's already starting to polyp out. He's doing really good right there. And uh, all of these corals, I'm going to take them off of the frag plugs once my Toons Coral Gum Instant comes in. I ordered it from uh, the Age of Aquariums in Australia and I talked with them this past week. It should be here this week. And the reason I'm not using super glue, which you can use a super glue gel, as long as it is a, a cyanoacrylate based super glue. But this Marcos Rocks is very irregular. It has a lot of pores and divots and the Toons Coral Gum will adhere to these surfaces a lot better than than super glue so I'm just being patient waiting for that to come in and then I'm gonna pop all these frags off of these plugs and then I'm gonna place them you know in their final final placement okay uh, let me start up here like I said that's uh, an Acropora the Bali Slimer and this here is a Favia coral this is the most common type of coral in the world this is uh, also known as a pineapple coral or a closed brain. It's um, got a green fringe with, with purple center. And then up here at the top, I've got a green brittle star colony, star polyp colony. I'm actually gonna move that over here in the center. And then right here, this is a colony of actinodiscus, actinodiscus blue-green mushrooms and it came with a little feather duster right there see that right there in the center small feather duster came in on that little piece of live rock 
Uh, I've got three different types of zoanthids. This one here is a uh, red mouth, uh, purple center with green fringe. And then I've got this one here, which is closed up at the moment. This is a yellow center with uh, like a, a neon green fringe. And then there's also two me metallic gold polythoas that came in on that little frag plug with them. Uh, these guys will be polyped out in midday. Right now they're closed up. Like I said, the lights just came on. I've got two different types of recordia right here. This is actually three mouths, blue with green polyps. And then down here on the bottom, this is another recordia, blue with blue, neon blue polyps. This uh, also three mouths. I super glued him to a little fragment of my Marco's uh, rock because he wasn't attached to anything except for a little bit of sand. And this, this here, I posted this on Instagram. I wasn't quite sure what it was at first. Uh, I thought it was a porites coral, and a lot of people on Instagram were saying that this was a Ganypora, which actually, under further investigation, the polyps have 12 tentacles. This is actually a, an Olivapora, or Alvapora, excuse me, and um, which is a lot easier to care for than a Ganypora. So I'm glad, uh, this, this guy's doing fantastic. I've had him in here for two weeks. And here's the uh, other zoanthid colony. This is, this is like an orange center with like a light red brownish fringe. And then I've got uh, two different types of Acanthastria lord howensis, which is also known as Acan lords for short. These are LPS. This is a three-headed Acan. And then up here, this is a seven-headed Acan. I added him on Saturday. He's not uh, swollen up at the moment, but it's like a red center with uh, green edges. And then here's a double-headed hammer coral. It's also an LPS. And, oh, my anemone, um, he's shriveled up at the moment, but it's really, really funny about this guy. When I first put him in, I placed him right there, about two inches to the right of where he is now. Well, he moved all the way around the rock. He came all the way around here. And he went, he went uh, between these rocks, came around the back side of this rock. And then he went under this rock and came out right here about four days ago. And so if he would have just moved two inches to the left, he would have been where he is now. He did all that traveling just to end up where he, you know, right where he was. But he looks great during the daytime. I fed him yesterday, uh, just a little chunk of the LRS. So he's uh, you know, contracted right now. But I couldn't wait for him to open up to shoot this video. I wanted to go ahead and get this video out to you guys. But he, he looks great during the daytime. And uh, let's see. I think I've just about shown you everything in here that's new. Um, now I did add two turbo snails. I added them on Saturday and there's one right here. There's a bumblebee on his shell and then there's another turbo snail right here and I'm going to be taking these guys out. They, they get large and they've been known to top a live rock. So um, I'm actually going to get some uh, knee right snails which will uh, you know, be better for a nano, nano system anyway. And um, so these guys will be coming out. They're in here now. They just helped with the diatom bloom that I had. Um, now, I want to get some Nasaria snails as well, but it's best to wait several months so that you can have detritus built up in your substrate because you don't want to add them and then have them starve off and die. So uh, the bumblebees, they will eat algae as well as uh, leftover fish food and detritus. Uh, they're, they're doing good. I think I saw one around here a while ago. Well, yeah, there's two of them. Two of them up there. Can't see from the reflection, but two of them up in there. They, they do a really good job of getting in the crevices of the rock. 
eating any leftover fish food. The clowns are doing great. They still have no interest in hosting the anemone right now. And that's to be expected since they're tank raised Ocellaris clownfish. I mean, they may never take the anemone, but anyway, it is what it is. Hopefully they will. Um, I'm gonna show you some of the products I'm using right now. Uh, my alkalinity went down, started uh, last Sunday. Not, not yesterday, but a week ago. It actually went down to six and a half uh, degrees carbonate hardness, which that's also to be expected after a cycle because the end result of uh, the nitrogen cycle is nitric acid and that's what alkalinity does. Alkalinity uh, bonds with the acids to, uh, to buffer the pH. And so my alkalinity was depleted. So I've been slowly adding seven and a half milliliters of Aquavitro's 8.4 every day. My alkalinity is back up to eight and a half degrees carbonate hardness. This is a fantastic product. Um, I'm gonna dose one more time today. I did a alkalinity test today using the uh, Red Sea Reef Foundation Pro Test Kit that tests for calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. Um, I also bought the Aquavitro's Calcification, which is a fantastic product for uh, raising your calcium levels, and also uh, Aquavitro's Ions for raising magnesium. Now, the thing about adding supplements, especially calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium, if you increase one too high, it's going to cause one or the other to uh, precipitate out of solution. So you want to keep your, uh, your levels in balance. Uh, calcium is around 420 parts per million in natural seawater. Your alkalinity is anywhere from 7 to 8 degrees carbonate hardness and magnesium is around 1,280 uh, parts per million in natural seawater. Now I hear a lot of people saying, well, I want to keep my magnesium levels really high, you know, to, to aid in certain types of coral growth. But it's, it, all these three elements work hand in hand. If you raise magnesium too high, you could cause your alkalinity to precipitate out of solution. Same with calcium. If you raise your calcium too high, your uh, alkalinity will pr uh, precipitate out of solution. So try to maintain the natural levels of seawater. And guys, uh, I want to show you this too. I also use uh, Coral Dip by Coral RX. And I dipped all of my corals before I added them to my system because it doesn't do any good to start with you know, dry rock free of any pests only to be adding them in when you purchase your corals. So I, I dipped all my corals and actually the only thing that came off of them was uh, four flatworms, which that's just a testament at how good my local fish store maintains their corals. I know they dip all of them upon arrival, um, but I did have four flatworms that came off. And guys, I appreciate everybody's suggestions on the names for my uh, blue spot goby but my four-year-old came up with a name for him. He's called him Bro, B-R-O. So I'm gonna go with that because this is my wife's aquarium and she likes, you know, Bro, what he named him. So I'm gonna stick with that. But I appreciate all of you guys uh, giving me some input on that. Um, well, right now I've got the Actinix turned down, my blues, so that, so that you could see, you know, the the new addition is really well. Once I turn it back up, it'll be hard to, to get it on camera. But um, Well, that's about it, guys. Just wanted to give you all an update as to what I have in here now. This is going to change a lot over the next month. Uh, you know, once I get the corals positioned where I want them. But so far, so good. I've got 13 corals and an enemy and three fish. Uh, I think i got a pretty good head start. The... Um, the coralline algae should start to take off any day now. And, you know, by the, by the looks of it, you know, getting that green algae there, that means the conditions are right for the coralline algae to start taking off. And for those of you that don't know what coralline algae is, that's the pink calcareous algae that grows on the glass and will eventually cover all the rock. And there again, too, guys, you want to maintain proper uh, calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium levels 
to support the growth of coralline algae. So even if you're keeping softies, you know, you want to make sure that you maintain those levels. You won't have to dose as much as if you're keeping LPS and SPS, but you still want to maintain those necessary levels. All right, guys, well, this video has gone on long enough. Appreciate everybody's time watching. I'll give you an update again real soon. Everybody take care.